When most people think of Gucci, they think of luxury. They think of high-end fashion that comes with a high price tag. But Gucci is so much more than that. It's a story of a family business that has survived wars, depressions, and recessions. It's a story of innovation and reinvention. It's a story of rising from the ashes to become one of the most successful fashion brands in the world. So where do we begin? Let's start at the beginning with Guccio Gucci. Guccio Gucci was born in Florence, Italy in 1881. His parents were poor but hardworking. When Guccio was a young boy, he went to work in a local hotel in London. He was fascinated by the wealthy guests who stayed there. He would watch them as they came and went, observing their clothes, their luggage, and their lifestyle. He noticed that the guests who stayed in the hotel were always well-dressed, and he grew enamored with the world of fashion. He learned that many of the wealthy placed more value on quality than the cost of an item. This was a revelation to young Guccio. Spotting a business opportunity, he decided he would open his own luxury luggage store in Florence. Guccio was determined to escape his poverty-ridden childhood. He saved every penny he could and eventually returned to Italy to work at an antique store to learn the tricks of the trade. His products were well made and he quickly gained a reputation for quality. However, when the First World War broke out, business slowed down and Guccio was forced to close his shop. He joined the Italian army and was sent to the front lines. When the war ended, Guccio Gucci decided it was time to start anew. This time he would focus on the luxury market. He wanted to create a brand that would be synonymous with quality and elegance. In 1921, he opened a new store in Florence and began selling leather goods. His products quickly became popular with the city's elite. Gucci was on his way to becoming a household name. Unfortunately, Gucci struggled to turn a profit in the first few years of business. Suppliers were constantly demanding payment, but Gucci's customers were taking their time to pay him back. Luckily, he was handed a loan by his future son-in-law, which saved the business and helped it grow. He soon hired a team of skilled artisans to help him with production of his products. During World War I, harsh sanctions were placed on Italy by the Allies. This meant that Gucci was unable to source the high-quality materials he needed for his products. He was forced to get creative, using whatever materials he could find. This led to him creating a larger range of products, including belts, wallets, and shoes. Meanwhile, one of Gucci's sons, Aldo, had his own plans. He wanted to open a store in Rome, which was the fashion capital of Italy. Gucci was initially against the idea, as he believed that Florence was the only city where his brand could be successful. However, he eventually relented, and Aldo opened his Rome store in 1938. The new store was an instant success. Soldiers stationed in the city would often visit the store to buy gifts for their loved ones back home. This helped to spread the word about Gucci's products, and the brand began to grow in popularity. At the close of the war, Gucci was in a hurry to take out loans so that his stores could stay open. He began to experiment with new designs. In 1947, Gucci debuted his now famous bamboo-handled bag. The bag was an instant hit, with both celebrities and everyday women eager to get their hands on one. The 1950s were a golden era for Gucci. The brand's popularity was at an all-time high, and its products were in high demand. However, Gucci's sons, Aldo, Vasco, and Rodolfo, secretly colluded to open a new store on Fifth Avenue in New York City. This was a bold move, as Fifth Avenue was home to some of the biggest fashion houses in the world. The new store quickly became a success, with celebrities and socialites flocking to it. Jacqueline Kennedy even chose a Gucci bag as her accessory for her famous televised tour of the White House. This helped to solidify the brand's reputation as a symbol of luxury and opulence. In the 1960s, loafers made the journey from being a men's-only shoe to a women's fashion staple. Gucci was quick to capitalize on this trend and released its own line of loafers. The shoes quickly became a favorite among the Hollywood elite, with Audrey Hepburn and Grace Kelly being some of the celebrities who were often seen wearing them. Gucci soon expanded its range of products to include clothes, perfumes, and watches. In the 1970s, Gucci became synonymous with wealth and success. The company's products were seen as a status symbol and were often given as gifts to employees by their bosses. Business was booming and Gucci seemed unstoppable. 
However, behind the scenes, all was not well. Just as Gucci was hitting its stride, tragedy struck. Gucci had died of a heart attack earlier in 1953. In his will, he left the company to his three sons. The three brothers quickly began to squabble over the future of the company. They each had their own vision, and they soon began to butt heads. This led to a bitter feud that would last for years. Vasco passed away in 1971, leaving Aldo and Rodolfo in charge of the company. Aldo decided to give his shares of the company to his sons, Giorgio, Roberto, and Paolo, while Rodolfo chose not to bestow anything upon his only son, Maurizio. Aldo's decision led to a power struggle within the company. Giorgio secretly opened his own store, while Paolo outed his father for tax evasion. This led to a media circus and extensive negative publicity. After Rodolfo's death in 1983, Maurizio took over the company. He quickly made a name for himself as a playboy, often being seen in the company of beautiful women and driving fast cars. He also had a taste for expensive clothes and luxury items. Maurizio was not content with his position and began to plot against his cousins. In 1975, he staged a coup and ousted Aldo from the company. Maurizio then took control of Gucci and began to run it in a very different way from his father and grandfather had. Maurizio planned to buy his family out so that he would be the sole owner of Gucci. InvestCorp, a Middle Eastern investment firm, agreed to help him with his buyout. Maurizio took out a loan of $50 million and used it to purchase a majority stake in the company. With Maurizio in charge, Gucci began to change. He introduced new lines of products and began to expand the company rapidly. By the early 1990s, Gucci was a global luxury brand with stores in some of the most prestigious locations in the world. However, Maurizio's playboy lifestyle and reckless spending began to take its toll on the company. By the mid-1990s, Gucci was $270 million in debt and on the verge of bankruptcy. Maurizio was forced to sell a stake in the company and was ousted from his position as CEO. Not long after, Maurizio was found dead in Milan. It was revealed that a hitman had been paid to kill him, sent by his own ex-wife. Tom Ford, an American fashion designer, was brought in as the new creative director. Ford began to turn the company around, creating new lines of clothing and accessories that quickly became popular with celebrities and trendsetters. His creative designs rapidly made Gucci one of the most popular brands worldwide, and in turn, increased company profits significantly. Today, Gucci is one of the most successful fashion brands in the world. It's a true powerhouse, with its products coveted by celebrities and everyday people alike. The company continues to push boundaries, constantly coming up with new designs and ideas. Gucci is a brand that truly knows how to stand the test of time. The Gucci story is one of both great triumph and tragedy. However, it serves as a reminder that even the biggest names in fashion started from humble beginnings. What's more, creativity can save any company in turmoil. So if you're feeling down about your business, don't give up. There's always hope for a comeback with the help of some creative minds. Let us know in the comments what your favorite part of the video was or if you have any questions about the Gucci brand.